my boxing dream match to be real quick it's just a uh it's just a toss over pretty much Anthony Joshua versus the winner of Deontay Wilder oh. and Tyson Fury because Anthony Joshua has been ducking some people and now we're going to go into are we talking about beta males Whoa. beta males Anthony Joshua literally just wants to make money he's not even trying for the, for the legacy but two guys that are fighting for the legacy and putting it all on the line December 1st this Saturday Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder in one of the biggest the Fury of heavyweight LA. yeah the biggest heavyweight fight since Klitschko and Fury, Fury, which was three years ago. Anthony Joshua, though, real quick, just to start on that, talk a little shit on him. Joshua is, of course. he's supposed to be fighting Deontay Wilder here. Wilder here. He's ducking Deontay Wilder because Deontay Wilder has one of the best right hands in the business and can knock anybody out. If you want to hear Deontay Wilder's record, he's 40-0 with 39 knockouts. Only Good one God. fight he hasn't knocked a guy out. So I'd be scared, too. But Joshua... An Englishman from, uh, you know, uh, well, from England. England. Uh, Great yeah. Britain. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. Uh, he is ducking Deontay Wilder, which is why this Tyson Fury fight is coming out. This is essentially the Tyson Fury comeback. He hasn't, he's only fought two just normal fights uh, since returning to the ring after a drug binge, three years of almost committing suicide and mental health problems. Uh, Fury wants to go at it with the best, and Deontay Wilder right now is 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 the best guy to fight because Joshua is ducking everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my ma- my dream match is for the winner of this fight to fight him, which would be you know probably the, the best boxing best match, thing. probably you know. the best boxing match you can come up with. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, but let's go let's go over this fight. Tyson Fury um, never lost his title, a lot like Finn Balor. Uh, never lost his title, but just you know left the sport. He had uh, mental mental health issues. Um, Man, that seems to be the thing of today now. Oh, Everybody's no, got he, almost, he almost committed suicide. Was was man. partying his ass off because he didn't feel like he he meant anything to society. Even though he had beat uh, Vladimir Klitschko, Vladimir Klitschko was by far the best heavyweight fighter. And Tyson Fury found a way to beat him. And and he said that after that fight, there was his whole purpose was to beat Vladimir Klitschko. Yeah. So he didn't have purpose. He's now out of that mindset, and he's trying to more yeah. raise awareness, and that's one of the reasons he's coming back with this fight. Let's so also great give thing. him credit, okay? Born yeah. again Christian, too. Absolutely. Man of God now. Go look up his interview with Joe Rogan. Uh, that's what really got me into this fight because he really explains what happened to him and what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, but he's also trying to knock Deontay Wilder the hell out in this fight. And let's not get this wrong. This isn't just some charity case going out there trying to fight. And Tyson this Fury has still never lost. He's 27-0 as well. Yeah. But he's only fought, you know... Uh, zero big fights in three years. So this is a very interesting fight. Uh, Deont- just to give you a little, um, uh, just give you a little like uh, promotion for this fight. Uh, Fury. The, the the good thing about Fury is if you never you never heard of him, you never follow the stuff. Very good footwork. Footwork like a guy that's five foot ten. He's six foot eight. 265 pounds. He's a bigger Brock Lesnar. Oh yeah. Okay. A lot bigger than him. But he has feet like Floyd Mayweather. And heavyweights don't see that ever, so he can duck punches from guys like Deontay Wilder, who kind of go crazy and go after these big right hands. Very so, rare, yeah. very rare. Extremely rare, that. and that's the reason he's the uh, the the heavyweight champion. Still, he never lost it essentially. Um, so great movement for his sides. He also a defensive fighter. That's one of the ways he beat Klitschko uh, a lot, like Floyd Mayweather. I'm going to keep comparing him to them because that's the best example. Was Mayweather is the best defensive fighter in the world ever. So you have that with Fury. Then you have the Bronze Bomber, Deontay Wilder. What a like weird a, name. Well, yeah. And, and Tyson Fury said it. We were watching a video before this podcast where uh, Fury has a, has a point. He goes, you just look at your nickname, right? You look at your nickname and you're a third place guy. Well, he, and he said, well, I'm going to take your gold and I'll give you a bronze title instead. <laughs> kind of has a point. I think it has to do with uh, uh, Deontay Wilder winning a bronze medal at one of the Olympics in the last couple of years. Yeah. So that's what it has to do with. But not necessarily the moniker you want. You, you, you don't want to be, not something you don't wanna be the around. silver bullet. You don't want to be the bronze bomber. I want to be the gold standard. Sheldon Benjamin style. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> Ain't no uh, stop for me. No. Yeah. Yeah. Where'd Sheldon Benjamin go, by the way? Real quick? Just real quick? Where'd he go? He went to make card hell. Yeah. Better question is, what happened hell. to Jason Jordan? Well, Jason Jordan had, had an injury. Hey, Jason Jordan's career yeah. might be over, just like Alexis Bliss's. But getting back to oh, that's so sad. boxing. So hot. Um, 
Yeah, so back to boxing, which is what we're talking about. Uh, Deontay Waller, like I said, 40 wins, 39 knockouts. This that's, is impressive. that's his thing. That's a monster right, right? there, man. It, it, it's, it's the Bret Hart of, of boxing, right? Bret Hart was so good at submissions. He wasn't finishing guys with a finishing move. He was finishing guys in the middle of the ring with a sharpshooter. That's Wilder's thing. Wilder's thing is his knockout, and he's six foot seven. He ain't no slouch either. Uh, a little under two. He's under 265. Well, Fury's going to be the bigger fighter coming to this fight. Uh, the one thing that Fury has on Wilder is that Wilder has never had the type of opponent like Vladimir Klitschko. He's never had that giant, crazy good Monster opponent. Monster opponent. He doesn't have that um, Canelo Alvarez to, to Triple G. He doesn't have that Canelo Alvarez to Floyd Mayweather or that or, or that Manny Pacquiao, right? Yeah. He's, his biggest win is against an aging Luis Ortiz. That was his last fight in March. Mm. So he, de- he has never won a fight against a guy like Tyson Fury. The only question is, what is Tyson Fury coming in with after being on a drug binge for three years, being extremely overweight, got to 400 pounds at one point, big show style, uh, and is now back to 265. But still has knockout That's power. A big like big drastic change right yeah, there, man. Still has knockout power like nobody change. else. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, still has knockout power like nobody else, though, uh, that anybody's ever seen in boxing, period. Uh, but there's the advantage Fury has, is that he's fought in these major fights, and he's won before. Now, the difference is that one was on uh, European soil. This one is in Los Angeles at the stable Center we were just at the other day. So this is an advantage for Wilder, who's fighting on U.S. soil, whereas Fury has to come through all these customs and all this stuff Let's and do all that. Um, shouldn't be that big of a deal, yeah. but nonetheless, somewhat of an advantage. Um, and he also, uh, Wilder has also been fighting more consistently. Uh, pretty much just been defending his title every couple months, whereas Fury, like I said, came out with two warm up fights and really hasn't had a big fight in any case since 2015. Yeah, this, this, this fight kind of reminds me a little bit of how Brock Lesnar came back from uh, diverticulitis um, and then came back to fight Shane Carwin. And mm. Brock Lesnar, he was off from the UFC for almost a year, and Carwin kept uh, fighting throughout the entire time, and he just kept waiting for Brock Lesnar to answer the call. So this Deontay uh, Wilder and Fury fight, it, there's some similarities to it. Oh man, this is this is going to be hard to choose. What do you think? I think I think at the end of the day, experience matters, and while I respect. Deontay Wilder for his his ability to knock people out. He's 40 and 0, 39 knockouts. You can't say anything. You you can't teach experience. You know, that's just something you know and learn. And that whole part about how Fury's had that monster opponent just it plays big into my mind. I like to go with experience. You know, a lot of the times when it comes to a sporting event, who do people pick? Do they pick the young team or the experienced team in the playoffs? Well, they're going to go with the team that's been there before because they will have the tricks up their sleeves. I think Fury has more to prove than Wilder. I think Fury has more passion than Wilder. I just think Fury needs to stay with it throughout the entire matchup. He cannot let Wilder get those knockout punches and start punching him down like Canelo Alvarez did to Triple G in that first fight because if it happens then Fury's going to be in trouble. He's going to be in trouble. He's not going to survive. But if Fury can just hang on in there to the later rounds, tire Deontay Wilder out, you know, you know, that's something. You know, maybe Fury learned some things because obviously he had to learn some tricks of his sleeve to get down to an acceptable weight. He was 400 pounds. So people like that, usually when you're losing weight like that, you learn things about your body that you would have never known had you not been you know, a Jurassic Park size. (laughs) So, I mean, at the end of the day, I think you got to go Fury to make sure, Fury because of the advantage of the experience. That's that's what I'm going with right now. Yeah, and the one thing about Wilder, too, here's another uh, mark on Fury's case for this fight. Wilder hasn't been knocked down that often. It also um, hasn't gone the distance a lot. I'm looking at a lot of his fights. First round, first round, second round, fourth round, fourth round. Now, lately, when he since he's been the heavyweight champion, ninth round, eleventh round, nine round, eight round. You know, what I'm saying five, one. Uh, and That's then, because your opponents get tougher. Well, you no, know, exactly. Uh, and they and they've said he's had an ability uh, to give another notch. On Wilder's case, he's had the ability to get knocked down in the Luis Ortiz fight. His last fight, he got knocked down and got back up and then ended up knocking him out in the tenth round. But there was a time. In that fight where people were like, oh, my goodness, this old Luis Ortiz actually finally did it to Wilder. Wilder came up and was able to knock him out. So 
That's the thing. If Fury can get this fight all the way and tire out, if Wilder's just throwing these bombs and getting tired, and Fury can finally get, you know, maybe in the later rounds, get a couple punches on him, maybe knock him out, that's another case in Fury's thing is that Fury has got, almost gone the length in most of his fights. Yeah. Uh, and had a couple knockouts in more of his younger <laughs> years, but more recently has found a way to stick to it and uh, and become a better fighter throughout a fight rather than just going for these bombs. It's a it's a fighty it's a, it's a match of two different styles. You've seen this in UFC before, where you have a big knockout guy, uh, for example, like Derek Lewis uh, and Daniel Cormier. Uh, Daniel Cormier was able to beat him because uh, Derek Lewis is going for those bombs the whole time. But if you have one skill that's better than the other, yeah. you can beat him with that's that one skill. And when you constantly go, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Eric. No, I was going to say just Lewis is just the he's just a brawler. That's what he is. And uh, uh, Cormier is more the experienced guy because yeah. he gets you know grappling, wrestling, and also uh, brawling. So he's 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 got like best of three, you know, if anything. Yeah, when, no, but to that case, it, it, it's the fact that Wilder is a knockout artist and Fury is not, and that's why this fight can work because. You, uh, my my prediction is kind right. of in before I make a full prediction is Fury Fury can win if he can get it all the way to the twelfth round, or Wilder's going to knock him out. It's probably not going to be Fury knocking him out in this fight because of the way Fury's fought the Klitschko fight, he kind of stood around, did the Floyd Mayweather thing, and was able to win it via a uh, decision. I think at the end of the day, when you're going for those all those knockout punches. You leave a lot of room for yourself to get knocked out yourself. Oh, yeah. All all you gotta do when you're when you're getting when you're when you're that opponent on the receiving end of those knockout punches is just wait for your perfect opportunity. All you gotta do is hang up in there, keep your gloves up close to your face, okay? Don't let him see an opening, okay? Don't get hit. <laughs> Don't get hit. <laughs> That's yeah. All right, and when that moment comes towards the end of the round, when they're starting to get tired and wearing out, and their vision's getting obscured, yeah. you start knock, you start hitting them, you start punching mm-hmm. them. We've seen it a lot, you know, in the days, you know. So I think Fury's got to stay with that as his game. He's got to use his intelligence. He's got to use his veteran expertise over Wilder. Wilder's the cocky young lion, all right, or a cocky young cub. Okay, mm-hmm. Fury's this lion. Okay, you know. So you've got to make sure at the end of the day that you outthink him, not outwork him. Absolutely. Uh, predictions for this fight, guys. You know what? This is going to be a little bit hard for me, but um, I'm going to have to go with uh, Fury. I think he might win this one. Worst case scenario, it might go with 12 rounds, unanimous decision. And I'm going to go with a knockout around maybe the 10th or 9th round. Okay, so you're, you're saying going, Fury's winning this. You're going, with, you're going with my scenario of that he gets him tired throwing punches yes, yes. and then he's able to find the... That's a, a, a fair prediction. He's going like to give an opening and then boom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going with Fury winning at the very end in the knockout. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to throw it out there. So I, I'm going to disagree. I, I think Wilder knocks him out in the fifth round. Jeez. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I think that I, I just think with me, you talked about experience. You want to put money on this one? But that experience, <laughs> I, probably, I probably will. Uh, yeah, I probably will. But uh, the thing about Fury is he's just been out of the game for too long. And I think there was a rumor that came out, or not even a rumor. It, it said that he was he was uh, supposed to have about five fights to get right. back into to, to have a chance at, at a guy like Deontay Wilder and Anthony, Anthony Joshua. And he just, after two, he said, I think I'm ready. I don't think he's ready. I think he, he two, he's gone through too much in his body to face a guy like this, Deontay Wilder, who is, who's a true champion. I'm looking, has retained this championship uh, over 10 times. Okay? I know Fury did that back in the day, but that was back in the day. Yeah. So I think Wilder, I think the fight is very, very interesting. Until about the fourth or fifth round, then Wilder's able to get him with one punch and maybe two, and I think he knocks him out midway through the fight. Mm. 